The Project Japan. The Japanese economy is drawing international interest. The post pandemic reopening and the return of foreign tourists are driving an economic recovery. The benchmark Nikkei Average Stock Index is also eyeing new highs. Inflows of overseas money are on the rise. Foreign direct investment has continued to increase, expanding eightfold in the past 20 years. What's behind this growth? Silicon Valley investor Anis Uzaman explains. Japan is one of the countries which has a very strong base. The government has taken a lot of actions to actually improve the basic infrastructure. So we are seeing a lot of confidence in the Japanese economies, and I am personally, as an investor, feel very strongly about it. There's also growing interest in the impact that investments in Japan can have on the world, and especially on the Asian region. What investments are being made now, and to what effect? We explore the latest trends in investing in Japan. Kumamoto Prefecture is in the southern part of the Japanese islands. Here, in a small town of 40,000 people, a massive factory is being constructed. It's the newest manufacturing base of the world's biggest chip maker, TSMC of Taiwan. It's getting a massive investment of $8.6 billion and will employ 1,700 workers. Operated by a newly established majority owned subsidiary, JASM, it will start shipping products from 2024. With the arrival of TSMC, Kumamoto Prefecture established an office to support the building of local chip making facilities. Our primary role is to first support JASM in starting factory operations. Second, we want to attract more chip related companies from Taiwan and other regions. Third, we want to support chip related companies already based in Kumamoto. These are the main objectives of our office. Semiconductor equipment manufacturers and major customers such as car makers are also setting up operations in Kumamoto. For overseas chip companies, the area offers advantages such as stable demand and a favorable environment for joint development. In 2023, the prefecture formulated the Kumamoto Semiconductor Industry Promotion Vision. They plan to secure underground water needed for chip making. As well as to encourage collaboration among businesses, high schools, and universities to develop semiconductor related human resources. Their vision is aimed at developing the prefecture as a center for the industry in Asia. In addition, they hope to contribute to stabilizing the global supply chain for semiconductors essential for people's lives and industry. By attracting more businesses and building up the knowledge base of Kumamoto University and local educational institutions and academia, we hope to develop Kumamoto's strengths in creating new products and pioneering new initiatives from the local area. The construction of TSMC's plant in Kumamoto is being backed not only by the local government, but also by the national government. Japan is providing subsidies of 476 billion yen, or about $3.3 billion, half of the total investment amount. The country has been actively courting global chip related companies. US based Micron and Intel, among others, have already established local operations and are investing aggressively across Japan. In May of this year, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with the heads of seven global chip related companies. To discuss their future investments and business plans in the country. Why are chip companies choosing to invest in Japan? If you look at the semiconductor market overall and the chip industry overall,、um, a lot of the technologies come from the US.、Uh, but the second strongest country, which has a lot of technology, is Japan. Japan has a very strong infrastructure. Um, that can actually help with the semiconductor technology. So, if you look at this strong base, it makes sense for TSMC to actually build a manufacturing plant in Japan because Japan remains the strong player in Asia when it comes to semiconductor. Japanese startups are also attracting interest as investment targets. Japan is considered a global leader in technological innovation. 
Leveraging that foundation, startups targeting the international market have been increasing in recent years. A lot of talented young people have been, who used to be like working in large traditional companies or becoming bureaucrats, they have been um, founding startups or like joining them. And then um, there's lots of government support for startups. So startup investment has really increased. The amount of uh, investment money flowing into startups has more than tenfold, increased tenfold. Among the many startups, some are contributing to the Asian region on a national level. One of those is Soramitsu, which provides blockchain-based solutions. They partnered with the National Bank of Cambodia to jointly develop a digital currency called Bakong. It's part of a mobile app-based, next-generation, real-time gross payment system. In almost all stores, it's possible to use the Bakong cashless system. For example, in markets and outdoor stalls, and all over, you'll find that QR code to use the system. It's been praised as enhancing convenience for people and vastly transforming society and the economy in the past three years. Bakong allows transactions to be made in both the Cambodian riel and the U.S. dollar, and in the first three years of operation, users have grown to 8.5 million people, more than half of the country's population. Even people without bank accounts can make real-time payments, and it also significantly simplifies and reduces the cost of building a nationwide payment architecture. It's also possible now to use Bakong for cross-border payments with Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia and Laos. Local currency conversion is no longer necessary. We got many countries to participate, and I believe the Bakong system was a catalyst in helping to link markets within Asia. Company president Kasumasa Miyazawa is originally from Sony, where he gained expertise in cutting-edge tech. This technological foundation is one of Japan's advantages. Japan has long focused on developing various technologies like this, improving the quality of products, and steadily building up businesses. I believe this approach is, without a doubt, world class. So, Japanese startups should take on the challenge of competing not just within Japan, but in various markets around the world. What do overseas investors see as the biggest attraction of Japanese startups? I actually is a big fan of the Japanese entrepreneurs and the Japanese startups. Why? The main reason is that they have good, strong technology. I have seen a lot of great hardware companies in Japan. For example, Mojin is a company that is doing the next generation AI-based robotics automation for industrial uh, manufacturing facilities. A lot of countries, including some of the companies from Silicon Valley where I am, I mean, have tried to do that, but nobody has been successful. I strongly feel that Japanese entrepreneurs remains very truthful and honest, and they actually complete the project 100% when it comes to a startup. Many Japanese startups are also playing a role across Asia by applying new environmentally sustainable technologies. One of those is Chal Energy. They succeeded in developing and commercializing the world's first bladeless wind turbine, which began operations in the Philippines in 2021. The turbine turns like this to produce electricity through the generator down here. The biggest feature is the black cylinders. A physical phenomenon called a Magnus effect occurs when they're exposed to wind. The Magnus effect is a physical phenomenon that when an object is spun, a force perpendicular to the wind direction will occur. Blade type wind turbines may sustain damage in strong winds or be affected by wind direction. However, Magnus-type wind turbines can significantly lower those risks. What's more, as they turn slowly, problems such as bird strikes and noise pollution are mitigated, and they're said to have a lower environmental impact on both people and local wildlife. 
Leveraging these advantages, Chal Energy took on the challenge of installing it on an island in the Philippines. It's an island nation like Japan and, similarly, also faces risks from typhoons. We felt it had the potential to play a big role there, especially because places like that often don't have enough electricity. So, the Philippines was at the top of our mind. Places like that are sure to become a major market for us. It's a big market for startups. One of Chal Energy's strengths is its diverse workforce made up of men and women from various countries. They are developing products aimed at solving global challenges. We've developed wind turbines that can be installed beyond Japan and similar island nations in various places around the world. So I'm very proud of the work we're doing. I discuss design ideas with the CEO or with the CTO and we, we work together even at the, at the maintenance of the wind turbine. The ambient in the office is really good. We can talk together, eat together. It's, it's a really good environment. In the future, we want to be a company that not only makes and sells wind turbines, but also supplies underlying electricity systems. We're aiming to build and provide microgrids as part of a comprehensive solution. We want to be the ones to supply that energy to those regions and spark a paradigm shift. That's the ultimate dream of Chow Energy. What should be the focus for overseas investors in Japan? I believe that Japanese startups can contribute to Asia by solving social issues that the Asian countries encounter today. Most of the Asian countries have um, seen real rapid growth in the past decades, but still there is, they still have lots of social issues. For example, like education, um, sanitation, transportation, and I think um, Japanese startups can contribute in solving these issues because we, in Japan, we also have um, used to face these um, issues in, in the past. Will investments in Japan give birth to technologies and services to contribute to the world and help generate a positive cycle? What's certain is they signal a broader shift shaping the future of the Asian region.